Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its technical analysis. If you are new, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. And I really do hope that you are finding my weekly videos very useful and uh, it's improving your trading and you're getting a bit of an insight as to how to really apply fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis to your technical analysis. Um, the pairs are time stamped in the description box below so if you want to skip to your favorite pairs you're more than welcome to but you'll be skipping out on a few, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, fundamental and sentiment, uh, as we know that fundamentals and sentiment are really what drives the market. And then we look to the technicals for our entries. So starting off on this week's upcoming news. So week ahead, uh, the Fed, Bank of England and Bank of Japan will be deciding on interest rates next week. And uh, that's quite important. Um, Federal Reserve, there's been a lot of talk um, recently about the Federal Reserve uh, potentially cutting rates and um, factoring in <coughs> a rate cut uh, because inflation has been a bit soft. Um, the economy is still holding up, still the best of really the, um, the other uh, seven countries and economies. But um, I guess uh, traders are anticipating an effect of the trade war on the US economy. So... Um, this is the CME FedWatch tool, and this basically gives probability of a rate hike and what really financial institutions are looking at. Um, and they still consider that there's going to be a 70%, 76% uh, chance of no change and a 23% chance of an ease. So um, even though the, uh, the market is talking up a rate cut, um, maybe not in this or the probability of a rate cut in you know on, on the 19th um, may not might not be uh, the best bet but if we go to July 31st meeting you've actually got an 87 percent uh, ease bias and this changes by the way the changes on a daily basis so uh, depending on obviously the data that comes out if inflation starts to come in if the economy still starts to grow then um, I doubt there will be an ease but if data for the US dollar does get significantly worse then um, probably the bets of an increase um, sorry an, an ease in interest rates um, will start to occur so um, what else do we have so we got Bank of England, I think they're uh, looking to potentially be a bit hawkish on interest rates, depending on because um, they're they're above their inflation target, uh, and the Bank of Japan will be tightening the interest rates, uh, but no changes are expected on on all. Um, they'll probably be talking, deciding whether they're dovish, hawkish, or just uh, going to hold rates. Um, other important releases include U.S. Uh, flash manif mar sorry, market PMIs, uh, house housing data and current account, UK inflation, that's going to be quite important, and retail trade, Eurozone flash consumer confidence, Japan trade balance, that's important for the economy, inflation as well, as it has an effect on interest rates, and flash uh, Nikkei manufacturing PMIs in Australia, first quarter house prices. It, we've also got um, and where's my Forex Factory? I think um, Forex Factory, we've also got uh, GDP numbers for the New Zealand dollar as well. Um, so that's going to be quite important for New Zealand dollar in case you're trading. In case you're trading that. So sentiment wise, um, we are in a risk off environment. Um, you know, Saudi seeks oil supply protection as US and Iran face off. So, you know, the oil tanker attacks earlier this week, um, risk off, um, as well as the Trump trade uh, wars, I guess you want to call it, or China um, trade discussions, global slowdown. So overall, there is quite a few risk off sentiment um, and events that are going on as well as Brexit in the UK and in Europe so quite a lot so overall I think the risk is is more off than on so if you do want to find out a bit more about how to trade risk on and risk off there is a uh, free 
trading 180 course fundamental sentiment analysis forex trading course um, where you get pretty much um, everything I know about interest rates inflation and really how to trade fundamentals and apply fundamentals to your uh, technical analysis and fundamental analysis spreadsheet is here where you have um, my fundamental bias not risk sentiment bias on um, the pairs that I'm bullish or bearish on to varying degrees this does not take into account risk off sentiment if risk is on then this applies if risk is off then um, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc will definitely be the the currencies to buy and in fact I bought the Japanese yen against the euro and I'll show you the trade but let's get into the technicals now and we can start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index and from last week's analysis this was the uh, Dow Jones dollar index and we came down into this demand zone here and uh, as much as the um, non-farm numbers came out as you know terrible I think it came out as like 70 75,000 jobs and the expected was something like uh, in maybe this 160 170 uh, the dollar you know has rallied taking out this this level of supply excuse me this level of supply here um, so going to the charts we can pretty much see what's happened and uh, let's go to Fibber tracing and stop chasing some placing some uh, some demand zones so um, again uh, sentiment event with the dollar but I think overall the dollar actually I know overall the dollar is really the, uh, the best currency out of um, or the best of the worst if you know what I mean they're in the best position when it comes to GDP and inflation so overall um, so if you do want to be a buyer of the dollar and the dollar index is just a measure of uh, dollar strength against the major currencies like the euro yen pound and also the Australian dollar so what we'd be looking for is this as confluence when we're buying any of the dollar crosses um, so if you are looking to buy the dollar this this week um, going into the um, the Fed interest rate um, announcement then you'd really be looking for any kind of bullish price action or maybe a pullback in um, into the week into some sort of demand zone and then start to look for some long trades or what you might see this week is a move higher and if the Fed do cut rates um, that's going to be probably a shock to the market um, as the, uh, the overall market thinks that there should be at least you know, 76 percent chance of no change so that would definitely wrong foot the market if there is a cut you know before um, before July's announcement so that would be if prices do drift up here and then you get some sort of you know bearish uh, you know price action that just adds confluence to the uh, to your trade if you're again you're you're buying or selling any of the Dow um, uh, crosses or say Dow crosses but the dollar crosses so again so we go into the dollar yen the dollar yen this week um, if you zoom in it's really just gone sideways and that's really because through dollar strength but we've also had yen strength because of a risk off environment and when you've got two strong currencies competing against each other then you tend to get sideways markets and when you get a strong versus a weak currency that's when you get a, uh, uh, a trending market either in the up or down direction so two competing currencies and you've pretty much this week just seen prices go sideways for the past week so if we go to dollar yen really nothing has changed um, at all you know from a uh, you know identifying any kind of supply demand zones as levels um, again risk off uh, the, the yen does tend to do well in a risk off environment so um, you could see prices start to break lower if any kind of risk off events intensify and then what you'd be looking for is you know move back up to what would be considered supply that would be a supply zone All right if that does obviously break to the downside um, but if risk is 
you know, on and the uh, situations tend to kind of resolve themselves, then the dollar really is the one to buy, I think. Um, and uh, you could see prices actually end up going higher or what you might want to do is maybe wait for a bit of a pullback and then, you know, look for um, any kind of buying opportunities, um, not only on the daily, but obviously on the uh, lower time frames. Uh, I trade the four, the six, the eight and a 12 hour. So look for those uh, time frames again. You can also use the intraday, you know, time frames as well, depending on what your setup is. So moving on to the dollar Swiss and dollar Swiss. Um, last week, I was looking for prices to kind of come down into this demand zone before looking to get long. I do, you know, prefer uh, buying the dollar over the Swiss franc. Um, unfortunately, we just didn't get any um, uh, 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 bearish price action or supply before prices went higher. But now prices have taken out that supply as the as the uh, dollar has increased in strength. So if we look at the charts, we can now adjust, start to adjust. Uh, these zones here so you've got a nice demand zone there and we've made higher highs higher lows so that's proof of value at the moment so what you'd be looking for if you're looking to buy the dollar you're looking at a move back intraday into the first zone would be here before looking to get long if you're looking um, you know at buying at the absolute lows then you'd be waiting for price to really kind of come back down into here before looking at any kind of uh, buy trades on the dollar and again it depends on what happens this week if you're looking at sell trades at the moment the only really sell trade zone wise is going to be up here and again you'd be waiting for price to come up there and then wait for some sort of risk off sentiment as the swiss franc tends to do you know um decently in um, a risk-off environment the dollar also does um okay as well in a risk-off environment um the swiss franc as the uh, swiss national bank has said is actually overvalued down here or highly valued down down at these um these areas so uh, they actually want a cheaper swiss franc so it benefits the swiss franc for the dollar to increase in value if not, if, this, if these zones don't work out, I'll happily be a buyer, especially into you know any of these uh, these zones around the 98 uh, round number and 97, 40, 97 as well. That is a whole zone right there to be a buyer of the dollar from a fundamental perspective. So moving on to the dollar CAD, the dollar CAD this week. Um, the uh, CAD um, did strengthen uh, a bit on some good news last week, um, but we did have some dollar strength really. We've got a bit of a gap down and then prices now have come up into this, this supply zone. And um, looking at the uh, live chart, I think what you've got is, uh, um, again, the dollar being the stronger of the two, but the Canadian dollar isn't too bad. Um, it hasn't really benefited from uh, supply issues with oil. Um, I think it's more more risk sentiment is uh, taking over, and there's the you know the Canadian dollar is uh, highly correlated to um, oil, and if you have supply issues, prices of oil should go up, and the Canadian dollar should benefit from that. But we haven't seen that so far. And when we say highly correlated, it's not 100%, you know, correlated. There are moments where it doesn't. Um, this is one of those obviously moments as well. Plus, if you were actually shorting here, you know, choosing to short here, then what you're saying is that the Canadian dollar is going to strengthen against the US dollar. So what you'd be looking for maybe this week is again, the uh, interest rate potential interest rate cut. Um, if it wrong foots the market, that's going to be a great zone in order to look for um, short trades if not if you're looking for a move up here again just this, that's just buying the Canadian dollar if you are looking to buy the US dollar then you'd be looking for um, you know move back down into 
this zone right here, um, this 1.332 level, 1.334 before looking at buy trades. Right, but right now, this is a, I like this level for a sell trade. Um, just you know, be aware that the uh, you're buying a weaker currency of the two potentially. So, and again, that can obviously change um, uh, with regards to what happens in the news this week. But those are pretty much your options. And again, if prices do start to come down, this would be another level down here. But just keep in mind that we've touched this level several times. You know, once. Uh, twice, three times, I guess, and the weaker a level, sorry, the more level times the level touches, the weaker it becomes. So just be aware of that. If we do get any kind of shocks in the market, as as far as a dollar interest rate cut, then and you still want to be a buyer of the dollar, and I still would be, um, then this would be the um, the area to buy. So several different areas on the dollar CAD. Moving on to the dollar, New Zealand dollar, sorry, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and um, into last week, prices came up into this very nice zone, very nice zone here. And again, this would have been a bit tough to take because this was the Friday, and the non farm jobs did come out worse than expected. So a lot of traders ended up probably getting long here, but they were wrong footed. Um, you know, into taking the uh, the buy trade because um, even though non farms are terrible, if you're looking at a macro um, economic and the bigger picture, the US dollar is still really number one, and you can start to see what's happened. Um, and the New Zealand dollar has had you know some negative sentiment, so a tough trade to take from a sell trade perspective on the Friday, but you started to see. You know, maybe some price action that you could have got involved in on a daily, and there was definitely some on the um, on the intraday. So, going on to the charts, a nice supply zone there, and then there was a sell off. As we have it now, we're down back into this zone here where we've touched once, twice. So again, this could be a very nice opportunity to get long. Many traders probably won't look to get uh, long because they're seeing that you know that massive, you know bearish candle, um, lot of supply in that candle. But um, don't be scared of um, you know bullish or really bearish price action into a level, um, as uh, prices can change, and especially into this week. I think investors and uh, financial institutions are going to have to decide what is going to make the U.S. dollar become a bargain here so if you want to be a buyer of the uh, uh, of this uh, of the US dollar versus the um, New Zealand dollar, dollar at this, ex this exchange rate then um, in order for the dollar to be considered a bargain and for traders to uh, look to buy the US dollar you'd be pressing short on your broker right sell on your broker so this level would have to be considered a bargain Right, or this price, the 65 round number, would have to be considered a bargain for the US dollar for prices to start, you know, continuing to go lower. Right, this is what we call proof of value. So, what is gonna this week, what is gonna make investors consider this 65, um, 0.65 round number an absolute bargain for the US dollar? And uh, again, I don't think we've got anything really because of the um. Uh, the US interest rate cuts but we also have the New Zealand GDP so if that New Zealand GDP does come out <clears throat> as um, as very very weak then this is going to be a level that you should probably get short at um, but if the New Zealand dollar GDP comes out as expected then this is looking like a very good you know what's it very good but definitely a decent buy but you're buying against the uh, strongest currency which is the US dollar. So moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar this week. Uh, this for me um, ended up being a sell trade, um, which we got in at the moment up about 109 pips. Um, and I'll show you the trade as well. So um, here we go. Again, this was into Friday, last five days. We got short around here. 
and uh, prices have sold off, right? Um, again, dollar being as much as uh, there was a, a bit of a negative sentiment on the US dollar, the pound for me was uh, is, is worse. A lot of uncertainty over the pound because of Brexit and the conservative leadership contest. Uh, not doing, um, you know, the, Boris Johnson is leading uh, the polls, and but until there is a leader chosen, um, there's going to be still a lot of uncertainty around um, around Brexit and uh, the power. The, sorry, the UK economy. So, um, going to the chart, and I'll show you the setup, and it was actually a uh, what I call a capture pain relief setup. And if you're not too sure about what capture pain relief um, is. All right, I have a video here, which is the supply and demand CPR capture pain relief location trade. I have a couple of videos as well on um, the, the capture pain relief um, setup, which is here as well. And this was a textbook capture pain relief trade. So um, I'll go over a little bit of it now. So lower time frame. We had um, here was the Friday last week Friday's um, non-farm news and price fell to follow through right and a lot of traders would have been getting long around here and basically into the beginning of you know uh, the week or last week prices actually sold off so what happens is that traders who went long suffer from something called loss aversion they cancel their stop losses or remove their stop losses and they start to feel a lot of pain when prices come back to where they actually entered um here is the relief phase and if they went if they bought here right they have to sell to exit adding to the supply and demand equation within this area right so this was this is a trade that i mean so the pound dollar we entered at the one two seven three two level which was 1.732, which is around this zone here. All right, three two. So this was the this was the uh, the entry stop just above the high, and we're currently up um, 109 pips on this on this trade. Um, this is now a break even trade. All right, and you can see where prices actually you know ended up selling off. So a nice trade, nice CPR. Um, zone trade on an intraday um, and uh, yeah very very textbook trade and you can uh, basically uh, trade these trades um, if you know what you're looking for so um, going back to the analysis daily we can take out that demand zone and this week if you're looking to buy the pound and short the dollar that would be really the uh, optimum area right now. If not, and you're looking at sell trades, you'd probably be looking at prices to really kind of come back to this area here. But I would preferably be looking for prices to come above that level and then come down here because we have actually a daily CPR zone within this area of fresh supply so i may i may look to actually take profit probably from now and then um or reduce my position take up take some more profit off that 109 pip move and then um just basically trail to stop and see what happens if we can get you know move further down but let's uh look at the overall bigger picture as well and see if we've got any more kind of demand zones in this area we've got a bit of a level Facts. Let's add it from here. Demand. Yeah. I'll look at that. There's another one, a little one here, and another one here. Now this whole area as well is demand, right? You've got a massive area of demand right here. Um, so in fact what i'll do is i'll add that area there 
we'll probably just yeah right like that and when you've got a cluster of you know demand zones right here just to clarify what you want to do is look for support and resistance zones within that cluster of supply and demand so you've got a bit of a level right here where you've got resistance resistance support support resistance support so not only will you have demand traders getting in around this level this one two four round number you're also going to have um support and resistance traders looking at that level as well you do have a bit of a level here as well as you've touched it a few times so around this one two four one two five round number as well so that looks like a nice zone to potentially take some profits if this level doesn't hold as well if you're in this trade with me so uh decent looking um trades if you're looking at um uh, if you're in if you're in short if you're in long these are the levels if you're trying to get in short then you'd have to wait for really price to come back to this supply zone or a bit higher before looking at any short trades moving on to the euro dollar and again euro dollar <clears throat> you have you know a level that's been touched once comes in you know twice i guess which is still a decent area i didn't take off this supply zone as i thought this may um potentially um it hadn't taken out supply yet right so um you can see pretty much what's happened and then pretty much it was the same setup as the uh, pound um cpr zone where prices kind of sold off um on the intraday and then there was an entry around here. It wasn't as pronounced as the uh, as the as the pound trade, which is the reason why I didn't take this this uh, this short. I think the the, uh, the pound was the uh, better technical setup. But you're seeing you're seeing uh, dollar strength overall come down into this demand zone. So what are we looking at this week? If you are looking to by the euro and you think the euro is going to get stronger this is pretty much your uh, your buy trade right now and if not then you're looking at an area below that demand zone but just again keep in mind we've touched this level you know once twice three times four times so again could become a bit weak um, if you're looking at selling the dollar You'd be looking at price to come up, up back up into here, but again, this level was touched um, a, f a couple of times, so you may want to wait for some sort of, you know, either manipulation around that area or prices to come up to this zone before looking to get short. So manipulation, and then a sell off, or up into this fresher area of supply. And what we've got is probably around this 1.14 would be the uh, best area to look for any kind of short trades this round number. Um, but I think the uh, the dollar, depending on what happens this week, if there are any surprises, then we, this could be a decent buy. Um, if not, the overall the dollar strength, um, you know, should still kick in. Again, price doesn't always reflect value. So even if we do get a you know a move further up still going to be an overall buyer of the dollar as the euro is in a, a worse situation economically and monetary policy wise than the US dollar so looking at the euro yen and euro yen this week it was risk off I'm usually not a risk off uh, trader but um, I was uh, convinced that the yen uh, would strengthen over the euro and it, then it just happened that the um, there was an attack on the um, in uh, on the oil tankers so uh, this did work in my favor as well so we ended up getting short around the uh, one two seven th uh, no sorry that was the uh, pound sorry the one two two eight four level so one two two eight four which was about here that level there and a decent trade to the downside so um, you're looking at probably any kind of buy trades if you see any kind of resolution to um, the risk 
off, so um, uh, um, any kind of uh, agreements or anything like that. Um, and then it also as well, you want to see Euro strength. And but as long as risk off continues in the market, you're looking for probably pullbacks into areas, and especially around this uh, this area here, or back up into you know this area here. And let's um, let's probably move this zone now up to around there. We can move this here as well for now. So. Um, I think back up into that zone would be a decent area to look for some short trades just above it Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar again um, with uh, US dollar strength price is pretty much sold off on the Friday and now we're back down into the lows of this area uh, the Australian dollar has been weak for um, for several reasons they are looking to cut interest rates plus again risk being off and they suffer from a risk off environment <clears throat> so there was definitely no demand in this zone here for that exchange rate but now we've come down into the lower end of this demand zone and there could be some profit taking going on here you know there could be some um some negative dollar news so um, this could be a decent place to potentially buy we also have a bit of a supply zone right there supply and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up moving this zone this zone down to here so first area that you want to look for short trades is this small area here but if not, then you've got this area here. Again, we've touched this supply zone. You know, count that as once really. Um, there is a manipulation right here as well. So <clears throat> I would like to get short around here. Again, this um, 0 0.7 round number, anywhere thereabouts. If not, then we're looking at the level a bit higher. Drag that across as well. Um, so for me, it's short trades all the way on this currency pair until something really changes drastically on the dollar. Um, but again, this could be a decent buy trade if you are looking uh, to buy the Australian dollar or take advantage of some US dollar weakness. And finally, we have the Australian dollar Japanese yen. <clears throat> again, if you even if you don't trade this pair, it's still a great pair to look at to assess uh, what is happening with again risk really risk on and risk off and obviously risk being off you can see price and what prices have done so even though there was a demand zone here risk as we know um, will trump any kind of technical analysis that you may put right on a uh, um, on a price chart because even though this has proven value in the past in the present is there going to be demand here right from a fundamental and sentiment perspective and there obviously isn't any demand for the Australian dollar and there's more demand for a risk off uh, currency like the yen so <clears throat> moving on to euro um, sorry Aussie yen and what we have to do is really kind of stretch back and I think if I'm going to take anything this might be an area I'll do uh Bit of support and resistance first before adding the supply and demand just to clarify there we go and you know what this whole area really is is an area of demand here so I'm gonna draw it here for now rather than covering this whole massive area but just until there is where you've got some demand you've got some longer term support and resistance within this area so um, at the moment this could be a decent buy but preferably I probably may not look to you know buy around here the prices would really have to kind of prove that there was any kind of demand at this zone so what you want to see is prices really kind of come up yeah to prove that there's some sort of demand and then come back into this area before looking at any type of um, you know long 
trades around here. If you're looking to get short and take advantage of any risk off sentiment, you've got a nice supply zone right there and any kind of supply into, if prices come up into these supply zones, the higher the better, probably the 76 round number and above, it's a decent level. And you've also got decent level of support and resistance within that lower end of supply and demand which adds to the supply and demand equation if you're looking to potentially get short at that level again risk being off if risk is on let the market prove that risk is on and then wait for prices to kind of come back into you know a proven demand zone so uh, that's it for this week thank you for watching please like subscribe share and if you have any comments or questions um you know leave them in the description box below or you can email me at info at trading 180.com um hope you have a great trading week and take care